but today it's all about gluten-free lady fingers. So, there you have it. You're gonna wanna let these cool for about 10 minutes. Welcome to Native Eats, where we are reinventing American and ethnic cuisine, clean, natural, and even beneficial. Today is gluten-free lady fingers. I started making these because I had so many reasons to. Number one, Tara Masu, right? I had to have Tara Masu. And so in order to get Tara Masu when you're gluten-free, you have to have gluten-free lady fingers. So here today, we're making them. I'm gonna offer to you my awesome gluten-free lady finger recipe. And if you wanna get the recipe card, for this recipe and you would like a convenient grocery card that we put together for you, click the little arrow on the description button and you will have the link to such. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel and you will be updated with all the latest and greatest shows. So let's get started. So everything you will need for the recipe is adorned here. We're gonna start off by separating five sort of room temperature, because they're kind of easier to separate when they're cold, so I got somewhere in between there, um, eggs. And we're gonna separate those out into two bowls. Then you also need salt, lemon juice, vanilla, sugar, brown sugar, or in this case, we're gonna make our own brown sugar. Uh, then for our dry ingredients, we're gonna need almond flour, tapioca flour, baking powder, and a little bit of nutmeg. So first thing we're going to do is separate out our five eggs. We need five egg yolks and five egg whites. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now that we have them separated out, whites and yolks, we're gonna set the yolks aside and we're gonna just deal with the whites because we're gonna make our stiff peaks first. It's the first thing we're gonna do. So, but hold on, reverse, because we are going to add a little sugar to this. So this recipe calls for two third cups of, of brown packed sugar, this recipe that I'm gonna do here. And so I'm gonna split the sugar up into one third, one third between the yolks and the whites. So we're gonna start with one third cup of brown sugar. I am gonna pulse it a little bit in the blender with the molasses, not to make it brown sugar, because I can do that manually with a fork, but because I also want to uh, get it a little bit thinned out so it melts better with the egg stiff peaks. Okay, so there you have like a little bit of a brown sugar. So yeah, so it just looks like a nice little light brown sugar there. So I'm just gonna set it in a bowl over here for the next round. That's okay, we'll just set this aside. Now let's get our stiff peaks going. So what we wanna do for this is we wanna start blending this up. There we go, okay. And into this, we wanna start getting some stiff peaks. We wanna put a, uh, about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt into that. We need our lemon juice now. So, we're gonna put in um, some lemon juice into this mixture. And that's about half a lemon. That's about all you probably need for this. And we're gonna get stiff peaks going. Okay, now we're gonna gradually add in our sugar. right out. And of course, you know, there's your stiff peaks, right? Ooh, beautiful. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just convert this right over to our bowl because we're gonna fold this in to our yolk mixture in a second. Now, <laughs> now that we have that done, we're gonna just rinse this off real quick because we're gonna now do our egg yolks. All right, so on to the yolks. 
So again, we're gonna make the brown sugar again with the last one third cup of sugar. So same process, one third cup, about a teaspoon of the molasses without the lid in the blender. That's gonna be gross. Okay, next, blend it up real quick. That looks a little browner, that looks nicer. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna go ahead and start our yellers. We're gonna put old yeller in the old mixture here and let's get it on. <laughs> we're gonna start with our yolks. We can get the mixture on. Okay, because the yolk is so thick, you wanna get it nice and scraped. Okay, so we're gonna get that going. And to this, we're gonna add a teaspoon of um, vanilla. And after this gets going a little bit, we'll start to add our one third cup of sugar into the slowly. We want to get it to like an opaque color. So while this is getting an opaque color and mix it up, let's go ahead and sift our dry mix. So to this, we're going to add one cup of dry mixture. So what we're going to do is we want to get just a quarter cup of the almond flour. So one quarter cup and we're going to sift it up and then the rest of it we're going to use tapioca, so three quarter cup of tapioca. Okay. Our mixture is starting to get okay, starting to look really pretty. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to start slowly adding in this mixture. Stop that for a second because we're going to need to scrape it. So to the dry ingredients, now that we have our two flour mixture in, our three quarter cup of tapioca to our quarter cup of almond flour, totaling two cups. Now we're going to add a teaspoon of baking powder. You can sip that also. All right, so the last thing we're going to get is for our, before we mix our egg yolks with our dry ingredients is we're gonna get a bag. This is what we're gonna pipe our lady fingers with in a pair of scissors to make our little hole. And our last little secret weapon that we wanna add to make these taste really bakery good is our nutmeg. So we're just gonna stir in our baking powder, our almond flour, our tapioca flour, and our nutmeg. And there we go. So to that, we're gonna add it to our opaque egg. Our, our yellow egg. Okay, so just a little bit at a time. This is nice and thick. So we're just gonna add a little bit of this at a time. To this mixture. I think I'm gonna add just a touch because I have them, my Madagascar vanilla bean powder. And this will just add an extra vanilla flavor to them, which is really good. But it'll also um, give it that bean, that bean flex inside the cookies, which will be really good. So I'm just gonna add like a little bit, not a lot, to this, you know, what, like a quarter teaspoon of my Madagascar bean. That's looking really good. Add a little bit more. And, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, you need to have your oven preheated to 400. We still have time, luckily, because we still have to pipe these. But get your oven going to 400 and get um, two baking sheets, it's probably good, lined with parchment paper. Get that ready. And now, we're gonna fold this mixture into this mixture here. There. Okay. So 
we're just going to take all this lovely good stuff here, and let me move on this side, and we're just going to fold all of this goodness into this. I'm just going to like sort of drizzle it around it so that I can fold it nicely. There we go. And that's what you're, you're going to look like there, and we're just going to fold it. Don't over mix this. Fold it, meaning cuts in, cuts in. All right, I think we're ready to, to bee girl. So in order to bee it, <laughs> that's my Minnesota accent. You didn't catch it, even though I'm not from Minnesota. Um, can you, my lovely, beautiful person, <laughs> person, she's my person. You know how they say that you're looking for your person? I found her. She's my person. <laughs> Oh, light, it's camera, action. Okay, so my person is gonna hold this, my beautiful person. There you go. And person, can you tilt it like one way or the other so it stays on a corner? Do it yes. to my way. Your, to my way. Your way. Okay. If you can. That yeah. way I can keep it on this side easier as I. Okay. Don't move. How she moves. No, I'm saying yeah. kind of. No, it's good. You're good. I'm trying to like move with it. Yeah, yeah. No, you actually caught it. Very good. This is like perfect aim here. All right. Boom. Boom. There we go. Okay. So now all we have to do is pipe these beautiful babies right on to. And we're gonna clip it. Clip the bowl um. And you know, don't do it too big. And then get right to your business, okay? Get on over there. Get busy, girl. All right, so then you're just gonna like, however you wanna do your fingers. Like, like this, you know? That's kinda cute, right? Looks a little strange, but cute, right? Strange is cute these days. All right, just do like a, you know, get a rhythm. Whatever your rhythm is. This might be a good rhythm. I think actually it's good to go like this. Yeah, you're supposed to do them like this. I don't, if I'm being, if I'm being patriotic, I don't, I don't really think that's a word. Okay. And so we're gonna just get them like that. And that's it. Boom. All right. So we're gonna bake these for ten to uh, eight to ten minutes. But this is an optional step. But you want to have a. You'll need to make up, this is some of uh, Native Eats homemade bacon, uh, homemade um, powdered sugar. And so this is an optional step, but I do think that they bake up a lot nicer and get that nice traditional crust when you use the powdered sugar dusting. So what I would recommend is you get, make some of the homemade Native Eats powdered sugar and then come in here or get some Native Eats approved powdered sugar, meaning it doesn't have cornstarch. It's hard to find that. And then you just come in and you dust them. Now, obviously, my lady fingers are a little unconventional in size and shape, and you can do whatever you like with your lady fingers or fingers, fingers, and however you like them, whatever shape you like. Play around with it a little bit. Get pastryatic. Ha! <laughs> Not a word, right? Maybe it is a word. Now it is. And there we go. So. Those are ready to go in the oven. You can let this absorb a little bit. You know, some of the cookie, uh, some of the ladyfinger cookie recipes, they like to let this absorb. I'm, I haven't decided whether uh, it matters or not, but maybe we will go for a round two because it did look to be absorbed a little bit. So let's go for the absorption method and let's go ahead and do a round two of the powdered sugar. Okay. And then they'll go in the oven for eight to 10 minutes. All right. So let's get these in the oven, eight to 10 minutes, depending on how golden brown they start to look. They don't need to be too brown, just lightly golden. And I'll see you guys back. Put your timer on eight minutes. And we'll check in then. Okay, eight minutes. They're ready. Look at these, how pretty. Look at how pretty those little lady fingers look. Now I did have them on different racks. So some of them are more golden than the others. So if you're really picky about it, you should probably keep them all on the middle rack like these guys. Cause these guys can actually go for another 30 seconds. And you know we're gonna do our cooling technique. Boom. On the granite. Better cooling technique. 
can get these out of here. Okay, and so, and so, let's put these over here and over here and let's get the last pretty, pretty ones. Look at these. Oh my gosh, OMG. Now these are the ones for your sticker book. Look at those. Those are stunning lady fingers. Just beautiful. So definitely if you want to keep them really pretty and pretty enough to eat just the way they are, keep them in the middle rack. Don't put them on the top of the bottom. But I didn't mind cooking them all that fat way for this, for this recipe because we're gonna make some stuff with these. We're gonna actually make some, um, with these lady fingers, tune in to watch us make, um, we're gonna make tiramisu bunny cupcakes for Easter. And these are gonna serve as the ears. So tune in for that show. But today it's all about gluten-free lady fingers. So there you have it. You're gonna to wanna to let these cool for about 10 minutes. And you know what I'll do? I'll, in about 10 minutes, I'll come back and we'll open up one of these lady fingers. So I'll see you guys back then. As promised, we are back to check out one of these beautiful lady fingers. So I would recommend, because this one's sticking, there's always room for improvement, but I would recommend, um, I don't think we just did the, the powder, so put it down first, the powder. And all, by the way, it's really soft right now, but as it sits out, it's gonna get hard. I mean, this is gonna turn into a, a harder cookie as it sits out. We've only had these out for about 10 minutes. So, um, but here they are, and they've got a nice little shell. Let's take a bite. Mmm. Holly, taste. Oh my gosh. Mmm. That's so good. Right? Wow. Like, um, <laughs> where it makes up in flavor, because it sure is an ugly cookie. But let me tell you, it tastes really amazing. It tastes really, really good. So, thank you for watching today, our gluten-free lady fingers. I hope that you enjoy them. With all of your really cool recipes, including tiramisu, and please subscribe and you'll receive all the latest shows and hit the post notifications so you know when the shows hit. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.